This episode is part of the transformational podcast Systems in Motion. If you want to learn more about the leverage points, please listen to the opening episode. What is the EU Water Directive and how is it implemented, or rather not implemented, in the German capital of Berlin? This will be analyzed by Gabi in this podcast episode. The Implementation of the EU Water Directive in Berlin Written and read by Gabriela Garcia If you've spent some time in Berlin in the summer, you probably agree that the city's appeal is due in large part to its many green spaces, like their extensive residential parks and urban forests within or just outside the city borders. And you've probably spent a few days and nights by the city's many lakes, rivers and canals. The green and blue sides of the German capital are, many agree, a big part of the city's quality of life. But anyone who has looked around Berlin in recent years will have noticed that things are, unfortunately, far less rosy than they appear at first glance. Like the rest of the world, the city is facing the mounting negative effects of a changing climate. A climate that will be characterized by extreme temperature and weather scenarios, such as prolonged periods of drought or excessive rainfall in a short time. Nowadays, street trees require additional watering on the hottest days, both by the municipality and by residents, who often use precious tap water for this purpose, while rain, due to the sealed soils in urban neighborhoods, runs off into the sewage system, being of little use to most urban vegetation. This is compounded by the poor ecological condition of all water bodies in the urban areas. Pollution, engineering and changing land uses have taken their toll on biodiversity and the situation will only worsen with the expected rise in temperatures. Is the city prepared for these scenarios? not only now, but also for the decades to come? And how is the vital resource of water being managed around here? Not only for the benefit of us city dwellers, but also for the flora and fauna surrounding us. The piece of legislation guiding these aspects is the EU Water Directive, which was adopted 20 years ago to provide European member states with a common framework for managing their water resources while stressing the importance of sustainable management and the good ecological status of all water bodies. Subsequently, the directive was adopted into German national law via the Federal Water Act, and since then, the various German states have made very different levels of progress in sustainable water use and improving the ecological quality of their flowing and standing waters. Among the worst implementers of the legislation, sadly, is Berlin. But what is the reason the city seems to have such difficulties in ambitiously advancing and implementing EU legislation? The answers to this are complicated and are best explored by taking a brief look at the capital's history first. The city was established in a glacial low-lying valley that to this day is characterized by both the Spree and the Havel rivers. In the past, most of the area was covered by various wetlands, which is already hinted at in the city's name, as the word Berlin has its roots in Slavic language and refers to an area covered by box and swamps. When urban development accelerated about 200 years ago, large areas had to be reclaimed with the help of drainage canals to allow expansion of urban areas and in parallel Almost all watercourses were developed and trained to meet the needs of the city and the industry. The consequences of this history are very serious today. The lack of natural flow dynamics, the segmentation of watercourses, the lack of natural structural diversity and, on top of that, the significant urban and industrial pollution have affected water quality and biodiversity which now makes some ambitious steps in the right direction and urgent necessity. The current situation and legal status quo arguably already include two extremely important leverage points defined by Meadows, namely leverage point 12, 
which relates to constants, parameters and standardization, and leverage point 8, which discusses the strength of negative feedback loops relative to the impacts they seek to correct. Applied to the Berlin regulatory framework, it can be noted that parameters and measurements to assess water quality are already in place and that continuous monitoring is being implemented to observe changes in water chemistry and quality, as well as in flora and fauna indicators. In an effective, timely responding system, the observation of, for example, high pollutant levels would then lead to the investigation on the pollutant source and into their eventual cut down to acceptable levels, as it is required by EU law. So how is it that this cannot sufficiently be done in the German capital? The answer to this is complex and can be divided into different categories. Under the category technical challenges, examples such as the mixed sewer system and urban ceiling can be cited. But while it is already a major challenge to convert urban surfaces such as sidewalks into more permeable surfaces, so that rainfall can infiltrate into the ground, other aspects, like converting the inner city sewage system into a separation system, where rainwater is not discharged into water treatment plants, since there is no available underground space left in the inner city. Other aspects, like upgrading water infrastructure, such as lock gates and wires to allow animals to pass through them more easily, are possible, albeit cost-intensive. Another category is challenges caused by the administration. This again is incredibly complex. Not only are there many different departments and actors with different responsibilities and competencies, but the powers and financial resources allocated to them can change significantly between different political terms, as can internal staffing. To give a brief overview, it is worth mentioning that the implementation of the Water Framework Directive lies within the competency of the Senate's Department for Urban Development and Environment, and here more specifically in the sub-department Integrative Environmental Protection. This department is headed by the Senator for Transport and Environment. Several subunits here are responsible for planning processes and for decisions on which measures to implement. However, these are then passed on to a completely different department, the one for the civil engineering, where some subunits ultimately award the tenders to construction companies. Luckily, despite the difficult task to improve the ecological condition of Berlin's lakes and rivers and calling for sustainable, future-proof water management, there is a silver lining on the horizon. The EU Water Directive has an important feature built in that has great potential to change the situation for the better. This feature is the involvement of all stakeholders for reporting on and advancing the regulations. As Lena-Marie Mutschler a former Global Change Management master student, so aptly pointed out in her article for the 2018 GCM Compendium. This integrative, co-creating aspect of the EU directive in the German equivalent can furthermore be nicely framed with the help of Leverage Point 7, which refers to the gain of driving positive feedback loops, and Leverage Point 6, which refers to the structure of informational flows. So what is the bottom line from this introduction to the EU Water Directive and the German Federal Water Act, which is currently only being implemented so hesitantly in Berlin? It certainly is that the appropriate political and public demand is essential to truly change water management in our city for the better and that we also need a strong commitment to protecting and conserving the aquatic habitats that surround us as well as the biodiversity within them. To best achieve this, we are already on track with some important leverage points that will help define standards for assessment and help monitor those standards to get an accurate picture of current conditions. But as Meadows points out in her hierarchy of leverage points, 
there are some other, even more impactful approaches to real transformation for this complex and nested system that is sustainable water management. Specifically, this means further integrating positive feedback loops into this process and expanding public participation while ensuring that this engagement is also reflected in the political agendas and activities. But in order to make public participation a truly accessible tool for us city dwellers, the various actors, private companies, elected officials, but also government agencies, need to be made transparent. Just as their competencies and responsibilities, as well as their current and future plans. This allows for a better understanding and more public awareness regarding the issues at hand and thereby hopefully also leads to more and more public engagement and the common endeavor to really preserve the green and blue facets of Berlin that we all love so much and to advance protection in the best possible way.